Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to continue talking about a rotational motion. Um, this lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens, presented on Unizor.com. I do suggest you to watch this lecture from the website, from Unizor.com, because every lecture, including this one, um, has detailed notes. And uh, also, uh, you might be interested in taking some exams which are also um, on this website. Plus, the website contains the prerequisite course called Math for Teens, um, especially um, useful for this course, for the physics, is um, the calculus and the vector algebra. So I do suggest you to be comfortable in these areas of mathematics before you uh, listen to these, re to these lectures. Okay. So, today is a rotational or angular momentum. That's what we're talking about. Now, um, you know that I'm paying a lot of attention comparing the translational movement along a straight line and rotational movement. And there is an equivalence between certain concepts in one and another. So, today I'm going to uh, again compare another very important characteristic of the translational movement along the straight line called um, uh, the impulse of the force and momentum. I will compare it with corresponding um, characteristics of rotational motion. Okay, so um, let's start uh, from just a little bit of repetition what exactly um, this momentum and impulse uh, in uh, translational motion. So, if you have a force which moves this object M, um, let's consider a simple case that at moment T is equal to zero, uh, this particular object has uh, speed equal to zero, so it's at rest, and then there is a constant force during certain period of time t acts upon this uh, mass. Now, what, what we know about what happens? Well, the uh, Newton's second law tells that we will have an acceleration of this type. And if I will multiply both sides by t, I will have f times t equals to m times a times t. But what is a times t? Well, if the initial uh, speed was b, uh, uh, force is constant, which means a acceleration is constant, a times t would be actually v at the moment t, right? So it would be mv. This is not exactly a precise formulation of this equality between um, the uh, impulse of the force and uh, the momentum because what's really more um, customary and more precise from a uh, physics and mathematical uh, standpoint uh, to talk not about the whole period from zero to t, assuming that the force is constant, etc. What is much more um, customary is to have two moments, t and t plus dt, which is uh, t plus infinitesimal increment of time, so if the speed of this would be v of t, the speed of this would be v of t plus dt, which is equal to v of t plus acceleration times dt. Remember this? This is just simple, um, where a acceleration is the derivative of the speed by time, right? Now, in this case, it's a little bit more precise to have it this way. Uh, force time infinitesimal um, uh, time period. So what happens with the um, momentum uh, which is changing from m times v to m times v plus v of t plus dt. So the momentum will increase, right? This is basically uh, m a dt which is m times dv, which is d of mv, 
right? Because m is constant in this particular case. So this is an impulse of the force f during the infinitesimal uh, time increment uh, dt. And this is an increment in momentum. So, impulse during the infinitesimal times dt causes infinitesimal increment of the momentum. Um, so that's basically all about translational motion, about the motion along the straight line. Now I would like to talk about equivalence between this and the corresponding um, rotational impulse and rotational momentum. Sometimes they say rotational, sometimes they say angular. I will do it interchangeably. Okay, so let's go to rotational movement. And the derivation is actually exactly the same as in case of a straight line movement. Now, we have a lot of correspondence by now between uh, translational and rotational movement. So we know that the force in translational movement corresponds to torque in rotational movement where the torque is actually the force times radius from the axis of rotation where this force is applied. It's very important for rotation to know the radius where the force is applied. So the force plays exactly the same role as torque. torque uh, force in translational plays exactly the same role as, rotation, uh, as uh, torque in rotation. Now next, next we have the mass. Now again, mass is important just by itself if you're talking about the straight line as the measure of uh, inertia how successfully if i can if i can say so um the object of mass a, a m would resist the force which is trying to accelerate it now the corresponding um characteristic uh is related not only to mass but also again uh, uh, on the position relative to the axis of rotation and we have something which is called uh, uh, rotational uh, uh, moment of inertia which is actually m times r square all right now they play basically the same role and now uh, well one more thing now then we have an acceleration well, you can actually add speed and acceleration along the straight line. In the rotational moment, we have angular speed and angular acceleration, omega and, and alpha. Now, what do we know about the relationship between these uh, characteristics in uh, translational mo uh, mo motion along the straight line? Well, the second Newton's law. Equivalently, we have already come up with this, we have tau equals to i times alpha. Torque is equal to product of uh, moment of inertia and angular acceleration. So basically all the corresponding things, f, m, tau, i, uh, a or alpha, they're all basically going parallel to each other. All we have to do is properly consider rotational characteristics from, from um, translational. Now let's talk about impulse. Now here, impulse, as we know, we know this, right? That's the uh, impulse uh, of the force during infinitesimal uh, time period dt and its relationship to increment of the momentum of motion, right? Well, let's do exactly the same here. So let's multiply it by dt. So it will be tau times dt equals i times alpha times dt. Now, alpha is acceleration, which means it's a um, uh, first derivative of omega, which is the angular speed by time which is d omega of t. 
right? From which we basically derived, uh, assuming uh, i is constant, then we will have i times omega. I, I skip this uh, uh, dependency of the t, we kind of assume it, right? So we have exactly the same correspondence between, in this case, rotational uh, impulse of the force and rotational momentum. So not such a big deal. It's very easy to, to derive this, uh, this type of uh, correspondence. It's exactly the same way as in, uh, in case of uh, translational mo uh, movement. So again, everything is parallel. So whatever the parallelism you have between force and torch, between mass and um, uh, um, uh, momentum of uh, inertia, uh, between speed and acceleration and angular speed and angular acceleration, the second law of Newton and the corresponding dependency between torque, um, moment of inertia and uh, angular acceleration in the rotational movement and correspondingly the relationship between impulse of the force exerted during the infinitesimal uh, interval dt and how it's related to increment of the momentum of the motion. Here exactly the same thing. The um, impulse, uh, rotational impulse of the torque during the infinitesimal time uh, dt, it's how it's related, it's equal to increment um, in rotational momentum or angular momentum. That's, that's what we're talking about today. So this is our rotational or angular momentum versus momentum of motion in a straight line movement. M is replaced by, uh, mass is replaced by a moment of inertia and speed is replaced with angular speed. Again, all the correspondence we are here. Now, in particular, as a consequence of this, what follows? Well, if force is equal to zero, or if you wish, the balance of all the forces which are applied to the same object are equal to zero, they all balance each other, then we have, as a consequence, that d of m v is equal to zero, which means m v is equal to constant, right? If m v is constant, there is no increase, right? There is no increment of the value. Now, this is called the um, conservation of momentum in uh, translational movement. So if there are, uh, if, if all the forces are balanced each other, then there is a law of conservation of momentum. And if you remember, we were solving a few problems like uh, billiard uh, 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 ball was actually rolling and hitting another billiard uh, billiard balls, and uh, we had some problems related to this speed of this, speed of that, different angles, etc. We were using this uh, law of conservation of momentum to determine what will be the result of this, um, of this one ball hitting another ball, or another two balls, whatever. It's exactly the same here. We, ha we have exactly the same law of conservation of rotational or angular momentum. If my tau, my torque, is equal to zero, which means all the different torques, or if you wish, forces times uh, radiuses uh, of application of these forces, if they balance each other, then torque is equal to zero, the resulting torque is equal to zero, and the resulting um, rotational momentum uh, will be constant, right? From this follows that d of i times omega is equal to zero, which means rotational momentum i times omega is constant. So this is the law of, conser uh, of conservation of 
rotational momentum. Now, in practice, how it, it can be done? Well, very simply, um, if you consider, for instance, a wheel which has certain mass and you have two now it can rotate but now it's uh, at rest and you have exactly the same um, objects here of the same mass so what happens we have one force the gravity of this uh, is trying to rotate um, the wheel in this direction so if, if, it's, if it's equal to F and this is R so if it's F, F times R is the, is the torque but now this is also the same force F now this one rotates counterclockwise this one rotates clockwise so their balance the sum of these two torques is equal to zero now <coughs> why actually we are um, summer, uh, 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 why, why we are summing with different signs in this particular case I think it's something which probably uh, it, it's, it's good if I will remind you about this you remember that um, the force is a vector right now the torque is also the vector now where is it directed it's not this direction of the force no if you remember, you were always considering F times R as a magnitude of the torque. But what is the direction of the torque? This is a direction. It's a cross product. It's a vector product. So they are considering this particular case. They are perpendicular to each other. And that's why the magnitude is equal to magnitude of this times magnitude of that times sine of the angle between them which is 90 degrees so it's times one so that's why the magnitude is correctly equal to um, f times r in this case but what's the direction well direction if you remember we have two different rules but which actually result in the same thing it's a vector which is perpendicular to both of them since this is the vector product it's perpendicular to both of them now direction should be from this to this so um, in in one particular case um, you see the R is in different direction F in the same direction but R is different direction and that's why the product vector product of one of them would be in this direction and another would be in that direction and that's why and that's when the torques are added together that's why they are equal to zero and that's why in simple case like this I can just subtract from one another from F times R minus F times R but why do we have the minus in the second case in this case because it's directed to opposite, opposite direction as a vector so let's not forget that the torque is a vector in as much as the um, uh, uh, the force but here in a rotational um, case uh, it's always directed along the axis of rotation and it's equal to vector product of the force and the radius vector into the point where the force is applied all right <coughs> that's basically it I do suggest you to read uh, notes for this lecture well, actually I suggest it to, to do after every lecture including this one um, and uh, and then I will probably um, uh, offer a few problems I will solve them myself and then I will maybe offer something for an exam to this rotational dynamics so I'm trying to basically finish up this particular topic of rotational dynamics I think theory is basically covered so I will um, consider a few problems and and exam that would be it so thanks very much and good luck <coughs>